we arranged the, um, the reactors. I mean, previously we talked about one, one typical reactor. Uh, we arranged the reactors in a series. And uh, typically we would have six to eight cells or reactors. And as the water flows from one tank to the other, different ecologies will develop in each tank. Uh, in the beginning, you have a lot of ammonia and you have a lot of food available. So therefore, you will have to find species who are adaptive to high ammonia levels, as well as who are at best just opening their mouths to let, let the food come in. As opposed to the guys who you would find at the end where there's no ammonia and 97% uh, and of the food is gone. So there you will need organisms that are adapted to that kind, of, uh, that kind of condition, who are able to take out that last couple of uh, percentage uh, of, uh, of food out of the water. The, the other aspect that, that is important to see here is that, as you can see from the top of the reactors, is the odor question. Uh, in wastewater treatment, only certain steps are accompanied by odor. I mean, we think all wastewater treatment plants stink, which is not true. If you do the analysis, there are very distinct steps that, uh, that are producing some odors. So what we do when we do design these, we identify those steps, which is only two or three, and we, we design them and build them separately, and we take that air and treat it in commercially available off-the-shelf biofilters. In terms of what happens before these series of reactors and after, that's very traditional. Uh, we have a standard uh, pretreatment, that means screening, sand removal, as well as uh, you know, some sort of uh, phase separation after the biological reactors, and then post-treatment depending on what the use of the water would be. Use of the water could be discharged into the uh, environment, lakes, uh, rivers, and uh, obviously reuse. Uh, the more, sometimes reuse is uh, very stringent in terms of how clean the water has to be, so it may require additional uh, polishing steps. Sometimes releasing into an extremely sensitive environment uh, requires even more stringent uh, and more high level of uh, treatment. All of this is uh, is doable and uh, can be custom designed for the specific uh, task. So the whole um, uh, facility is then enclosed into one structure. So uh, an organic treatment plant is one building, there are no uh, basins and no uh, big tanks. It's, uh, it's a very important element of our approach is a, is a design philosophy which we will talk about in more details. This is an illustration to show you just a selection of eight species here, uh, how the composition of the various species will change in the various tanks. Uh, as you can see, there is an overlap, and, uh, but the, the proportions are changing. And, and it's important you, we, that you think about these systems, these reactors, as a series of ecosystems, as I said, but because we can, we can influence the condition in each cell, that's why we say it's an engineered ecosystem. The number of, of, uh, of organisms that are in flotation or in suspension. Uh, these numbers, you know, 150 TSS, which is total suspended solid, is just an indication that all the bugs, as I said earlier, are in are attached and the ones that are missing, these are, these are very, very low numbers. We build these uh, treatment plants as a, as a controlled environment, uh, particularly important to do this in climates uh, where the temperature goes below uh, freezing. So the enclosure is a greenhouse and the, f the purpose of the greenhouse is to provide the, uh, the minimum six to eight degrees uh, centigrade. Greenhouses are manufactured in very large quantities. It's a very inexpensive kind of enclosure. It's usually by the hectares. I'm sure you've seen, you know, large area of use of tulipan and uh, tulip and um, and, uh, and tomato farms that have hectares and hectares of uh, uh, greenhouses. The point is, we don't design unless 
uh, we are in special urban uh, situations, but normally we design our treatment plants to fit under the commercially available uh, uh, greenhouses as opposed to doing this the other uh, way. Let's take a look at the next one. Of course, in climates where it's not necessary to, uh, to provide that kind of uh, uh, you know, protection from, from the cold, uh, we use a pergola or a shading structure. Um, and thereby, obviously, the investment cost would be a little bit uh, less. 